John, this is Carol, Vice Chair. Jeff um, was chair for the last year, but he is no longer on our Parks Committee. So can you take a vote, please? Absolutely. Um, thank you for being here, everybody. Carol Allen. Here. Brenda Austin. Is not uh, she's not on the. Uh, oh, that's right. She's not. Um, Zach Andrews. Here. Robbie Cantrell. Here. Jim Hill. Here. Tiffany Long. Here. Shelly Reynolds. Here. Victoria Rizzo. Here. Woodrow Terrell. Here. And Shirley Winters. Here. And I, Jonah Jacobson, am here. And so, if you want to call the meeting to order? Okay, let's call the meeting to order. Order is um, four. Okay, number two, um, the June meeting was canceled, so we have no minutes to review, but we do have the May 15th minutes. Did anybody have a chance to look that over, and does anybody have any changes? Can I get a motion to approve the May minutes, please? Is All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So number three is communication from staff. Jonah, you're it. All right. Well, um, yeah, thank you everyone. It's, it's been a minute since we've all um, gathered together here and it's good to, good to see you all and good to see a couple new faces. Um, Tiffany and Woodrow, thank you. And um, so yeah, a lot, a lot to catch up on since our last meeting. Um, as I'm sure everybody is uh, well aware, uh, the growing season has, has been in full force for the last few months. Um, uh, the parks crew has been very busy with uh, managing vegetation on all of our city sites um, through the spring and summer. And, but uh, we, we are beginning to see a slowdown in plant growth uh, with the higher temps and lower groundwater availability. Um, so we're, we are beginning to round the, the corner um, out of uh, the busiest time of year for us. So it's, um, it's, it's been um, an exceptionally busy year just given the, um, you know, uh, the perfect growing conditions of you know, alternating rain and sun um, through the spring that kind of lasted um, longer than normal through June this year. So. Um, so yeah, we definitely had our work cut out for us on mowing and, and weed eating and, and all of that. Um, but yeah, we are, we are beginning to see things dry down, which is great. So um, uh, in the third week of June, the Chalk Chalk Trail, um, the Trout Tales section of the 40 Mile Loop Trail officially opened. Just want to thank you all for your work on that. Um, if you haven't visited yet it, uh, or, or had a chance to go down there and ride your bike or take a walk, um, it's, uh, it's, it's really something, it's, it's a, a really good amenity for us to have here in, in the city. So thank you for your work on the naming process of the trail. And um, in response to the budget committee adding an allocation uh, to the current fiscal year budget for park security, uh, Oregon Patrol Services, uh, who was already contracted to do bailiff services here in the municipal courtroom, um, has now been contracted uh, as uh, uh, parks security. Uh, they are currently they're assigned to uh, patrol Glen Auto Park during the day, um, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays through the rest of the summer up to Labor Day weekend. And um, in a normal year, we will begin them um, on Memorial Day weekend and run them through the summer on that schedule. Uh, we also did have them do an expanded um, uh, schedule through Fourth of July weekend, and we had them moving at park close uh, at Glen Auto Park. We had them moving up to um, uh, to Sunrise and Columbia parks uh, to try to deter fireworks usage in those parks uh, around sundown and, and a couple hours after. Um, and uh, as, as, as far as I know, that was relatively effective. I didn't hear about any major incidents involving fireworks in, in those two parks. So, um, so uh, I have heard so they, uh, Oregon Patrol Services or OPS does provide me with um, uh, myself and and city management and MCSO uh, with um, reports after after each weekend of, of um, you know what they experienced um, and so 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 far I think they're they're doing pretty good work I'm happy to read their reports um, we are also having them do night uh, night passes twice nightly passes uh, through Columbia and Sunrise Park 
um, and Glen Auto Park. So um, there's both day operations and night operations with uh, with OPS now. Uh, yeah. Um, John, did you say to Labor Day or through Labor Day? Through Labor Day, after right. after right. Labor Day weekends, right. yeah, right. they they will they will. Um, I believe we'll continue actually um, using them in some capacity at Columbia Park after the beginning of the school year. Um, but once things start to slow down in terms of visitation at Glen Auto, we'll probably pull them off of that um, Friday through Sunday daytime rotation there. So. Um, and um, some really big news on June 27th, Trail Keepers of Oregon uh, completed the stairway reconstruction uh, project in Beaver Creek Canyon, which was a monumental effort that they've, they've um, been working on there over the last um, six months or so. And they um, met and exceeded my expectations in every single way. Uh, they, they, they finished the project in time for the end of the fiscal year. They, uh, they did a great job. If, if you guys haven't, uh, or if, if y'all haven't gotten down and checked out the work that they did there, it's phenomenal. It's, it's very professional quality done at a fraction of the cost that it would have been for, uh, you know, if we'd hired a contractor to do it. Um, and you know, it's, it's a nonprofit volunteer organization that did fantastic work. Um, I'm, I'm really, really proud of the work that they did out there and just the, the difference between the, what the staircase looked like out there before. Um, it was hazardous to walk down and now it's it's uh, you know a piece of parks infrastructure that will um, be there uh, allowing people to access the canyon for many many years to come um, so yeah we did um, last weekend Saturday July 13th we did hold a um, a uh, appreciation and gratitude um, luncheon uh, for trail keepers volunteers um, I believe I invited all of you to that as well as well as um, city council and, and the mayor and um, it was it was a beautiful day for it, um, you know, so we just, you know, it was it was it was really good to just connect with all of the volunteers who worked on the project. Um, we did a we did a ribbon cutting uh, ceremony at the top of the stairs. And um, so everybody who worked on the project was was very proud of it. It's it's a unique project for them as well. I think they, they don't do a whole lot of that kind of work. And so um, it's my hope that funding will be secured in the next year's budget cycle to uh, continue those repairs and renovations to the trail system in Beaver Creek Canyon. Um, the condition of the boardwalk below the new staircase is such that um, I'm, I'm seriously considering closing it off with barricades because it's, it's, it's hazardous for people to walk on, especially once it starts raining. It's slippery um, and the, the thing, you know, it, it does worry me. So um, uh, it's my hope that um, at some point in the future uh, we can secure funding for the next phase of trail improvements and utilize uh, the amazing resource that we have in, in, in the Trail Keepers of Oregon um, organization. And um, let's see, this, uh, this month, first Friday was canceled in July due to the extreme heat uh, that followed on the heels of the, the holidays. Um, and uh, the next first Friday event will take place on August 2nd with the Kiwanis Club cruise-in event immediately following on August 3rd. Um, so I hope all of you can get out and enjoy the downtown festivities for that. And uh, the first Movies in the Park event is scheduled to take place at Columbia Park on July 26th. And so that's a really fun event if, if, if y'all haven't attended that in the past. So, um, And there's two more uh, Movies in the Parks uh, events coming in August as well. So. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, the uh, bidding process uh, is scheduled to begin tomorrow uh, for contracts for the site prep and construction of the new Sandy Riverfront uh, Park. So it's possible uh, that we will see crews breaking ground on that project as soon as September this year, um, which would be um, interesting to, to see. I, you know, um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm not holding my breath for a September start date, but that's that's what I'm hearing. So. Um, and um, let's see, during the January ice storm, um, a large tree uh, at Llewellyn Park had its top broken out and fell into a, uh, a, a, one of your neighbors, uh, Shelley's uh, backyard, um, kind of damaging their fence. Um, that tree I have kind of, I've, I've had scheduled, scheduled for removal for quite some time. I've been waiting for the grounds to be hard and dry enough that we can um, get an arborist in there to, to work without damaging the ground or the, the irrigation. Um, and uh, once the arborist was in there, he, he recommended that we remove uh, a couple, a few adjacent cedar trees that were planted very close together 
that were all leaning, that were directly on the property line of the, the Kellys there around the corner from you. Um, and all those trees were leaning towards, um, towards their house. And those three cedars that were next to the broken top tree, it was discovered, uh, were riddled with carpenter ants. Um, so I, I, I went ahead and, and had those trees removed. Um, I, I know that it's a big change. Um, I have had some calls about it. And, um, you know, it's, it's not, of course, removing large trees is not something that I ever want to do unless it's necessary for the protection of, of life and property. And in this case, I, I opted to remove the trees um, in the middle of summer when it was easy rather than respond to an emergency um, in a, 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 a snow or a, a rainstorm or a windstorm um, in the middle of winter. So um, that being said, um, there were quite a few through the, the storm um, and, and, and because of subsequent damage um, and other reasons like the ants, um, there, there have been uh, quite a few trees that have been removed in the last year in Llewellyn Park. I do plan on placing a nursery order this winter um, for the, the largest nursery stock um, oak trees that I can find. I think I'd opt for oak trees because they're, they're, they're slow growing. They provide really you know, excellent shade um, in the summer um, and they're, they're sturdy and durable in, in the wind that we have here in Troutdale. Um, so I do plan on reinstalling some young trees in, in Llewellyn Park to replace the trees that have been removed over the last year. So if you go, if you're, if you live in Llewellyn Park or you're visiting Llewellyn Park, you'll, you'll probably notice that it looks a little bit different after this week. I just wanted to mention that to everybody that uh, uh, that decision was not made lightly and it was made with, with, uh, with safety of life and, pro and property in life. So, and um, let me see here. Oh, Multnomah Youth Corps, NYC, uh, which is a, a really awesome organization. If I, you're probably familiar with them, Carol, um, they are uh, an organization that uh, operates they are part of Brown School District, I believe, right? Um, and so they uh, they essentially, they, they help um, kids who uh, are kind of struggling academically or are maybe looking at deciding to uh, quit school. Um, uh, they, they help kids with, uh, with job training um, and, you know, kind of show them, all right, if you're gonna be making this decision, then, you know, we're, we're gonna try to prepare you for, um, uh, for the labor market. And so, um, I am working with them over the next month uh, to um, reduce the, the weed and blackberry growth that has um, kind of been taken off in, in, the, uh, in the Columbia Dog Park. Um, they were out there the last couple of days and they've been doing phenomenal work. Um, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll take a bite out of that. It's been kind of, you know, that's kind of been um, not the, the top priority in terms of that very busy season of vegetation management that I've been talking about. Um, but uh, we, we are we are we are getting back to that at this point. So um, and so you'll see some work happening out there over the next month. And um, uh, you know, essentially getting this dog park to uh, you know the point that I I envision for it is 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 going to be a multi-year process. Um, so you know, if you recall, look, about a year and a half ago, it was all about head high blackberry in there. So it's you know oh, um, there's. Blackberry and, and weeds are, are going to be something that uh, we may never eradicate in there, but um, but you know it's something that will be a, a continued process. So Have, has the city ever considered? I mean, this is a crazy idea, but yeah. I was talking to somebody in there and they said goats. Goats in, in the goats. dog park? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. um, shutting it for a week and bringing in goats and just letting them eat all of it because they do that's that. That's a good idea. And there's no pesticides involved. Right. And then it would be much easier to see. I think I read about it. They only eat the leaves, mm -hmm. the soft stuff. So if they were to eat ivy, the vines would all still be there. Yeah. But they'll clear it out. That's an excellent and there idea. there are services within the state of Oregon that provide their goats to do that. And it's already fenced in. Yeah. I will look into that, Tiffany. That's a really, that didn't occur to me. I actually, when I used to work in vineyard management, there were some organic vineyards that would utilize goats for clearing out. They'll, and they'll eat, they'll eat poison oak. They'll I eat mean, everything. you could yeah, make so. an event of it. Invite people to watch yeah. the goats. I don't know, but yeah. Yeah. That's a really good idea. I mean, you know, earlier in the spring, I was real, I was really debating whether or not to, to use herbicide in the dog park. Um, a lot and, of sticky weed in there, right? And it, yeah, and and it's 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 a difficult decision because there's you know there we need to do some amount of weed control. Um, doing it by hand is not something that we have the labor capacity to do all the time. I did I did speak with a lot of visitors in the dog park as I was weighing that decision. Um, 
And you know, the general sentiment that I got from people was that they would really prefer no herbicide in there. We're also not allowed to use herbicide um, within 150 feet of those water towers that, that are there. Um, so we wouldn't be able to, to use it in the entire dog park anyway, only 150 feet away from, from the towers. Um, so um, so uh, I like the goat idea and I'm gonna look into that. That's, that's a, yeah, we'll see if there's anybody renting a, um, renting a herd out uh, locally, so. <laughs> And um, yeah, um, uh, I think that's that's about it for my staff report. Um, does, does anybody have any other things they wanted to ask me about, or any other details on any of the things I mentioned? Or? This is Zach. I don't want to clarify. Uh, you had mentioned for the base <coughs> on the Sandy River Park. Um, mm -hmm. I thought those were closing on either the twelfth or uh, thereabouts. So you're saying that they're. There's a meeting for it tomorrow that I just saw on the schedule, so I apologize if that was incorrect information. I'm actually not really involved in the bidding process at all. I was involved in the planning process with the consultants yeah, um, okay. who are taking the plans to, to, to the bidding process, but um, uh, while I've been adjacent to it, I have not actually been involved in that directly. So, But I did see um, a meeting scheduled in this room for tomorrow night in here, okay. which I, I thought was the kickoff, So, but okay. maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, in any case, uh, it is... Uh, Imminent, <laughs> so um, yeah. Um, but I can um, I can send an email with uh, an update on that after after the meeting once I once I get that hashed out. So. Okay. I appreciate you sharing about the reforestation of the uh, we'll call them area so that's good to know. Yeah. Um, what happens typically with the uh, like the wood waste on? That's a good question. Yeah. So um, I tend to have that. You know. So um, uh, I don't. Uh, I, I don't take any of it or parks workers don't take any of it. Um, we first essentially if there's good fi usable firewood we um, you know we it's essentially up for grabs for people in the community. If somebody notices that there's free firewood coming down in there we say if you if you want to haul it out you can. Um, that's uh, you know that's you know there there are times also that uh, we do utilize the you know firewood from down trees um, for charitable donations. Um, last year um, the um, Harvest Serve event, the East County Serve event uh, from the, the Harvest Church uh, was held in the dog park where uh, they removed many, many cords of, of wood from down trees that were taken down in, in the uh, um, in the dog park building process. So, um, you know, whenever possible, if it's all in one central location, um, and if there is an organization that, you know, like the, the firewood ministry that gives firewood to, to needy families, um, I, I try to utilize it in that way. Um, but short of that, um, if, you know, it's, it's up for grabs. Kind of. So, um, I, would, uh, I would be careful. This is Tiffany, mm -hmm. um, that people know there were carpenter ants. If they're infested with carpenter ants, it's not ideal to stack it next to your house. Right. Yeah. Right. Or your wood pile, I guess we'll get into the rest of your firewood. Yeah. So, um, uh, so yeah, thank you. I will, I will, I will point sure. that out or put a sign out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wish that, uh, so, and there's times also when, um, if a tree falls, so there was a, a rather large cherry tree that fell um, in the ice storm in the Stewart Ridge Greenway. Um, and a neighbor there, um, their, their son is the woodshop teacher at Reynolds High School. I forget his name um, at the moment, but um, Eric, Snyder. Eric Snyder. Yes, that's right. So, um, so uh, he reached out to me and asked if I would be willing to bring that, that hardwood trunk to, to his woodshop for... Um, for milling for you know educational purposes so so we did that um so and yeah in the future if there's walnut or cherry um or you know decent hardwoods then i'll i'll, I'll bring it to mr snyder at rounds so this is jim can i just share a comment so i spent a couple of decades in outdoor recreation property management mm -hmm. Um, so I have a bit of an idea of what humans can do to properties and the facilities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and you manage a bunch of acreage here. I've also visited a lot of municipalities around and other entities, parks and so forth. And I gotta say that we have some parks to be really proud of. And I just wanna commend you and your team and hope you pass on a word of positive praise to them. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of work. And um, what I notice about our parks and I think our residents are proud of is that A, they're clean, and B, they're continually improving, and that's good kudos to y'all. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. I really appreciate that, and I absolutely will pass that along to the parks workers. Um, so, yeah, that's really nice to hear. Yeah. Uh, this is Robbie. Jim, thank you for uh, getting the ball rolling on that, and I would actually like to take a moment to recognize that it's just over a year 
I believe of Jonah Jacobson serving as the uh, party director. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Time flies. Yeah, I, I began in May, so yeah, yeah. We're, um, I'm a few months past my 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 one year, but yeah, that's uh, um, yeah, it's hard. It's it's hard. It seems like you know ten minutes and and a hundred years at the same time. So, so all that that Jim just said that we're continuously improving and getting better. Uh, you've managed to figure out how to do so within a very short amount of time, which to me, you know, I see the month by month growth um, here in the committee, and it's just so impressive. So uh, kudos to you. Absolutely. I, we all see your hard work and we all see it every single day in the park. So thank you uh, specifically very much and your team. Well, thank you, Robbie. That's yeah, that's. I really appreciate that, y'all. You know, there's there's times when the job is very hard and it's very thankless. So it really it it it's, it's I, I really I can't tell you how much I appreciate here. So. Well, most of us didn't think anybody could fill the bench here, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and you did a good job. <laughs> I'm growing I'm growing into them, hopefully. So. <laughs> you did a good job. Um, this is Tiffany. I have a question about. I saw that there was a bunch of new signs put mm -hmm. up at the various, almost all of the parks have a sign above the dogway stations. Yes. Mm -hmm. That mentioned that pets are to be kept on leash. And then very small, nothing funny, it mm -hmm. just says, please pick up after your pet. Mm -hmm. right? um, my question is a lot of these parks have signs when you walk into the parks that still say no pets. Is there a plan to scrape that off or cover it? There is, there is. And yeah, we actually, there's a, I have a lot of signage work to do that I'm getting, I'm, I'm you know, I've, I've spent the last couple of months like really putting out fires, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. um, so I, I raced to get, um, you know, all of you and the city council all put, a, you know, a, a lot of work and energy into that updated dogs ordinance. And I wanted to make sure that that wasn't just like, you know, getting kicked, kicked down the road. So I scrambled to get the, the, the updated signs under uh, the updated uh, ordinance um, out. And, but yeah, there's more signage work to do, certainly. Okay. And as things are slowing so down a little bit. Those won't be ignored forever. No, no, no. I just, I've, I've just had, I've really had, you know, me and my people have had our hands very full for, uh, for the last couple of months. And so, but we're coming back to that here pretty soon. And I've got more signs to order. Um, I, I need to order updated signage for Glen Auto Park. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I will be also posting um, uh, a larger infographic sign um, at the parking lot at, at uh, Columbia Park. Um, with like a you are here map that shows people how to get to the dog park because there's still kind of some confusion there for people. Um, I also, ahead of movies in the park, I am doing, um, uh, I'm trying to do an update on, on, on some of the infrastructure at Columbia Park. Um, we will be putting out new benches before movies in the park. We're going to be putting out those new big belly bins everywhere um, at Columbia Park ahead of the, the movies event. Um, and I also plan on installing, uh, taking a lot of the no dog signs that you see in the dog friendly park mm -hmm. still um, and, and posting those on the fence, uh, perimeter fence on the ball field uh, to make it very, very clear to people that they should not be bringing their dogs onto the, onto the ball field there. Right. Because there's two parks, this is Carol, there's two parks that are no dogs, it's Van Lotto and Columbia, correct? Yeah, Besides well, the dog park, right, so right, dogs yeah, dogs there is like, you know, for all intents and purposes at Columbia, there is a dog friendly easement um, on leash between the parking lot and the dog park, um, but yeah, they're not to, you know, run amok anywhere um, uh, besides inside the fence dog park. And I have been I have been mentioning this to people as I see it, um, you know, as I when I see people uh, with dogs off leash, um, you know, uh, it has I, I've seen it a lot more at uh, at Glen Auto recently with you know with um, uh, summer weather. So um, and you know it's um, personally um, you know I love dogs and and it's sometimes I you know I have a hard time walking up to people and saying hey I'm so sorry but you can't you can't bring your dog here but you know that that's those are the rules that we have on the books. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's, that's how it is. And so, um, you know, I think that eventually people will start to, you know, that change will sink in at Glen Auto and people will begin to understand that they can't bring their dogs there, even though, even though they have for years in many cases, um, you know, and, um, uh, certainly if there's ever a dangerous dog or a threatening dog, um, I, you know, I don't really have a problem mentioning it to people. Um, but you know, I did, I did mention last weekend, I did mention to a, you know, I, to a, a family with little kids, uh, who were sitting on the beach with, uh, you know, their, their elderly Labrador retriever. 
I'm so sorry, your dog is obviously not a threat to anybody, but you can't have it on the beach. So, um, so um, with some updated signage there and with some time, I, I think that we will start to start to see that sink in. This is Tiffany. With the signs, um, is the website going to be updated too? Because there's that list on the website that has little X's of what, where dogs are allowed. Right. And right now, there's only two X's. Oh, really? Okay. It yeah, I was talking to our, our web developer about that recently. I thought that he had made some updates, but I will check in with him about that and see where we're at with that. Because um, he was at, he was asking me about uh, you know uh, a dog's page that he is designing. So if that's not up and running yet, then you that, should see well, it. There is the dog. There's a, there's a um, link for the dog park on the very bottom okay. of the parks page. So there is one down there. I, um, I've asked a couple of people that I've seen with dogs if they know we have one and they don't. Oh, okay. I think it would be, I know that you guys talked about having some representation at first Friday, but it might be fun to have a table there that says this, this is the stuff we have available that nobody knows about. Yeah, yeah. One of the other things that I think is really cool that a couple of our parks have is the mom and toddler or baby swing where the mom can sit on the swing and the baby sits in front of them. Mm -hmm. Those, they didn't exist where I lived when I had little kids. Mm -hmm. And I think they're so cool. I would have gone out of my way to find a park that had a swing like that to be able to swing with my kid and not just stand there and push them to actually yeah. be able to do that. So I was thinking that could be something that could be displayed like a picture of the parks that have those swings. Yeah, yeah. Because there's so many people that walk down there with their dogs and with their kids. And so it could be fun to just have a board that displays because not enough people know about it. Right. Yeah. And it's it's amazing that we have that. It's such a great park. And I don't think, it, I don't think our parks are getting utilized as much as they should be. They're always empty when I go by them, hmm. except for the sun, sunrise. It's always got lots of people. In right. <laughs> well, I, um, uh, if they're always empty, then I don't know where all the garbage is coming from. But, um, <laughs> sure, yeah. um, <clears throat> well, this is true. I know at Mount Bleeden, there's the, people are parking in that parking lot. Mm -hmm. and. I know they're not in the park because the parks are right. So I don't understand why the visitors or whoever they are are allowed to park there, and then people who may want to go there aren't able to park because there's no parking. Well, frequently um, the parking issue at Whedon Park may partially be contributed to the trail keepers of Oregon crews that were working uh, on the stairs there. Uh, may perhaps you'll see less people in the parking lot there. No? Okay, all right. Okay. Um, Interesting. Well, yeah, I wonder where they're all going then. Hopefully they're utilizing the new staircase uh, and enjoying it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody else have questions for me about? An unrelated thing. Remember, I think it was in February, we were going to have a tree event. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then it got either put by the wayside or not enough on the problem or something. Yes, yeah. Is that going to be coming up at some point in like September, October? Or? I think it'll be a little bit later than that. Um, generally, the best time of year for tree planting is um, winter. Um, actually, kind of counterintuitively, but uh, you want to you want to put trees in the ground when they're they're dormant um, and when there's like a lot of um, soil moisture, um, and so you know so that when they wake up in the spring, um, they have the maximum amount of water before you know it gets hot to to establish their their roots. So. Um, I did receive an email from uh, the Friends of Trees rep uh, just the other day. I, I need to talk to her um, and set up a, a planning meeting. But yes, we, we are still working with Friends of Trees on, on producing that event. Friends of Trees also was involved in our Earth Day event this year, um, which, which was great. They did a lot of outreach there. And um, so, but yes, that, that event is, um, is still being discussed and planned for this winter. This is Robbie. They were also at first Friday. Friends of Trees was. And so was uh, the Backyard Habitat certification yeah, board. Yeah, Yes. Um, one, uh, one thing I did forget to mention in the staff report uh, thing, I know this is the Parks Advisory Committee, not the Facilities Advisory Committee, but um, uh, at, uh, a, bit, a large portion of my job does go towards the management of the city facilities as well. Um, and just an update on the, the facility side of things. Um, uh, back in, in May, we uh, onboarded our new in-house custodian, uh, and she is doing phenomenally. She's doing excellent work, um, and uh, I mean, I you know I've heard from um, 
some of the, the long timers around Troutdale that the city buildings look better than they have in, in 20 years uh, with Rosa on board. So I'm, I'm really proud of the work that she's doing and really happy to have her on my staff now. And um, uh, additionally, on the facility side, uh, we are currently recruiting for a facilities maintenance technician um, after a separation with our, our former um, FACMATE tech uh, earlier this, uh, uh, this summer. So um, if you know anybody uh, who is, uh, is, is handy um, and interested uh, in working for the city of Troutdale, um, please uh, direct them to the, the city website and, and have them fill out an, an application. That, that posting closes in another week. So. All right, number four, public to be heard, and we do not have any public. We do have Paul. Paul, do you have anything? Uh, yes, I do, Carol. Um, I wasn't quick enough on the uh, hand raise button, but when you were doing um, approval on the May minutes, I noticed a couple of places where whoever printed the minutes, they were there was some blue highlighting. Um, um, the summary section, page one, number seven, or some blue highlighting. Oh, I don't so, have that. So somebody's trying to draw attention to some certain words or phrases. And on page five of the actual minutes, um, there was a blue highlighted section where oh. it said there was a reference to Oxbow Park that oh, should yeah. have read Glen Auto Park. That's correct. Thank you, Paul. And um, one, one, one more question I have while I'm on. Um, you're talking about signs, uh, sign revisions at parks. And I'm wondering uh, what's going on with the uh, big sign that used to be at sunrise that was taken out by a car. Right, yeah, that's, that's an excellent question as well. Um, just to address the, uh, the blue highlighting, um, I think that that's just an artifact that Tina perhaps uh, forgot to remove um, before printing the, the minutes. So sometimes she'll, uh, she'll put that blue highlighting in before when she sends me the minutes for my, uh, my approval ahead of, of these meetings. Um, I think that that is just a, a mistake on, on her part. Um, by the way, if you all aren't aware, Tina, uh, Tina Leahy is out for the next six weeks on, on medical leave. Um, uh, and that's the, that's the reason that we, we won't be having the August, um, the, the August meeting. So, um, because I, I, you know, she's instrumental in putting, in putting these packets together. Um, and as much as I would like to be able to cover that uh, for her while she's out, um, I, I've got a lot of other stuff going on. So, um, uh, as to the sign at Sunrise Park, um, that sign was made um, by a, um, a in my, an inmate sign shop. Uh, years ago, um, as same with uh, all of the carved wood signs that you see at many of our parks, and unfortunately, and I, I can't, um, I think that that style of sign uh, has kind of gone by the wayside with with digital printing. Um, it's kind of hard to find people who will make signs like that now, and if you can, um, they are extremely expensive. Um, I have been looking at this uh, this company. Um, called Fossil Graphics. It's based out of New York, but they've made they make a ton of um, of uh, durable outdoor signage for um, national parks, state parks. Um, they do a lot of work in the way, even though they're based in New York, they they do a lot of work in the West. Um, their portfolio on their website is you know pretty much all California, Oregon, and Washington. So um, so uh, and Nevada. And so um, they make some really beautiful products that are graffiti proof that um, you can essentially just pressure wash spray paint off of. Um, and so um, I am thinking about doing kind of a, uh, doing an order through them with sort of a, an updated, more modern looking um, um, high, it's, I forget what it's called, it's like high density aluminum or something, uh, but it's, uh, uh, they're pretty cool looking, I think. And so I think, you know, uh, we might go a different direction with the sunrise sign than, than making an exact copy of the one that was taken out, um, just simply because that style of sign is kind of difficult to acquire at this point. Um, but I haven't forgotten about it, Paul, and I am, I am definitely, I'm looking for a suitable alternative because um, that, was, that was a beautiful sign and that was a really high quality sign. And um, I don't want to just, you know, I don't want to throw just a, you know, uh, a Vista print, um, you know, plastic core sign in its place. I want to put something that looks equally nice. Um, I am also looking at that company Fossil Graphics for some sign, you know, some some really high quality, durable signage for uh, the new Sandy Riverfront Park 
eventually. That's you know probably a lot further down the road um, in the in the construction process of that part. But um, uh, so to you know hopefully to answer your question, I don't have a sign ordered for Sunrise right now, um, but I am looking at, at options for uh, for for a suitable replacement. Okay, so number five is the election um, appointment of uh, city officers. So we are having to do three of them. We so we do um, we vote for chair, vice chair, and our representative um, for TCAP. Um, so uh, is there anyone who wants to run for chair? Or nominate, shall we? Right on. <laughs> This is Robbie. I'll nominate Zach Andrews. I will accept the nomination. Okay. Sure. Okay. So, um, Do you have the sheet for the voting? Um, I have a, um, let's see here. Um, I have motion voting records. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have a specific election sheet, it looks like, in this packet. I have um, the Roberts Rules Guide to the process, but. Um, so there are two nominations on the floor. Mm -hmm. There should only be one. Mm -hmm. So I would like to go ahead and put the nomination for Zach okay. up first, and we vote on Zach, yes or no. Sorry. And if Zach passes, then we, we just take Zach. Okay. So will that work for everyone? Years of experience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It looks like I, I don't have that form. Yeah. Um, so. so I have a list with everybody's name, and I'm I'm taking detailed notes of everything so we say. Yes. Um, I think I can do that just in the voting record. It's got everybody's names in it, so I can just check them off as, as we go. Yeah. Whatever works. Okay. <laughs> so do you want to do roll call for Zach? Sure. All right. Robbie. Okay. Okay, so for the nomination of Zach Andrews uh, for Troutdale Parks Advisory Committee Chair, um, Carol Allen. Yes. Woodrow Terrell. Yes. Shirley Winters. Yes. Tiffany Long. Yes. Zach Andrews. Yes. Robbie Cantrell. Yes. Shelley Reynolds. Yes. Victoria Rizzo. <laughs> and Jim Hill. Yes. Uh, uh, this is Sherry. Not to be a stickler, but do we have an alternate? Or is there No, the vice chair vice is the chair. one that um, picks up when the chair is not. No, I just meant, is there any alternate on our oh, committee? Oh. No. Ah. No, not that I, I think we're full. Cool. Okay. I just was thinking if somebody's an alternate, because I remember on public safety, if somebody's an alternate, then they couldn't vote. So just for the. No, yeah, not only is an alternate to them. I know. <laughs> no alternates. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, um, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, your your new Parks Advisory Committee Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, he's right in the right spot. Right. <laughs> Appreciate it. It's all yours now. <laughs> Do you want to take over? And sure, yeah. Vice Chair? You got it. All right. We will uh, appreciate it. Thank you guys. Uh, we will now accept nominations for the Vice Chair. And I would like to put forward the uh, Robert Control. Thank you. I accept. Oh, I second. <laughs> um, 
dissemination. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a roll call. So it's a roll call vote. Were there any other nominations? Only one yeah, nomination at a time. Sorry, I'm just taking some notes here. We'll go here in a second. Okay, for the nomination of Robin Cantrell for Vice Chair of the Troutdale Parks Advisory Committee, um, Carol Allen, how do you vote? Woodrow Terrell? No. Shirley Winters? No. Tiffany Long? Yes. Zach Andrews? Yes. Robbie Cantrell? Yes. Shelley Reynolds? Yes. Victoria Rizzo? Yes. And Jim Hill? Yes. Passes. Yep. So your new vice chair is Robbie Cantrell. Ladies and gentlemen, your new vice chair, Robbie Cantrell. So I cannot do it. So I am, I am the alternate for the town center advisory board. So I can give it to her. Ooh, my second. You see, Jim, nominated Jim. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to point at Woodrow, but okay. <laughs> Woodrow, you're not already. Are you one? No. No, I think I am. I don't right? remember. Yeah. From our which one? Which committee? What are you talking about? Are you on city, you're on city what, what, is, what is today's date? I'm from all these committees. It's hard to find somebody who's not already Okay, so it's Jim. And so that doesn't go to a vote. You just volunteer, right? Okay. That's fine. As long as Ellen yes. There is more than one person who wants to do it. All right. Well, there you have it, everyone. Thank you. Um, I will update uh, the name tags with uh, your new titles before the next meeting. So. Cool. All right. Well, that brings us to the next item, which is the discussion of imagination station service issues. I think that was brought forward by Carol. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, this is Carol. So, I had a conversation with John and actually emailed him, and I know that he already knows of the issues. We had brought um, our class there for a um, end of year party over there we did. And underneath two of the swings, there was mats because there's a hole. And then, but everywhere you almost met, there's like, there's gotta be at least eight to 12 things that need to be repaired. So um, I, I knew that John already knew, but I needed to bring it to his attention. Anyway, um, my concern is um, doing a patch job and then having to spend all that money for a patch job and then having to go back and do a whole new service. Um, which is concerning because you know I know it's being used a lot right now in the summer, and then um, you know it really is used quite a bit on your lawn, even in the rain. People are out there, so I mean I see it because my classroom is right there. So um, yeah, I'm. Um, so um, I was sorry. I was just trying to log my computer into the Zoom meeting so that I can share my screen and show some photos, um, but. Um, uh, I can get to that in a minute as, as the discussion moves away from me. But um, thank you for bringing this item uh, to um, to the agenda today. And um, it is something it, I share your concern about this. And this is something that um, I have been looking at solutions for for uh, the better part of my short uh, tenure at uh, at Troutdale so far. Um, and I've solicited a few bids for a few different options for it. And um, so uh, my 
My preferred um, uh, replacement of the flooring is some really high quality AstroTurf material uh, that's called For Forever Lawn um, that is uh, static free. Um, it's It's got a, you know, a, a really well reviewed um, safety rating and um, it's not the cheapest material, but it lasts a really long time. It'll stand up to the, the wind and the elements. Um, and uh, so I did solicit a quote for that ahead of our um, uh, budget worksheets uh, that I was writing, you know, ahead of the budget committee meeting. Uh, I, I did that in February. Um, and uh, I plugged the, 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 I plugged the numbers from that quote directly into my budget worksheet um, and submitted it. Um, and uh, that number um, was not a happy number. Um, it was $300,000. Um, and um, so, you know, uh, I know that that's a difficult uh, amount of money to swallow considering that uh, the entire play structure when it was built cost, I think, $850,000. Um, it's apples and oranges comparing what things cost 15 years ago to what things cost now. Um, and so um, without getting too, too deep into that discussion, which I think we're all well familiar with at this point, um, you know, the floor, um, if, you know, if, if a child is seriously hurt on that floor, the city's going to be on the hook for a lot more than $300,000. Um, that being said, um, that, but that, that, um, you know, my proposal um, to go with this material and, and the quote that I received uh, did not make it into the final um, budget proposal that went before the budget committee. Um, management felt that that number was not uh, easy to swallow and it was not going to be approved in the, the budget discussion. Um, they reduced that number to $100,000. And in the discussion of cuts through the budget committee, that allocation was reduced to $50,000. Um, we, I'm sure, could find a contractor who's willing to take our $50,000 and give us something. Um, but as you mentioned, Carol, I don't know if that's wise. I don't know how long that something will actually last. Um, I, you know, um, I, 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 I think that ultimately that could be a waste of $50,000 and we will look at replacing the whole thing in a few years time anyway. Um, now, uh, I will fully admit that um, last year I intentionally did not direct my crew to do a lot of uh, patchworks and band-aids on the floor uh, because I thought that we were going to rip it out and replace it this summer. And so that didn't seem like the best use of my crew's time at, at the time last summer. Uh, so it did get worse. Um, and uh, so in hindsight, I don't know if that was the best decision. Uh, but, you know, at the, at the time, that is the, the decision that I made. Um, since, uh, you know, since the budget committee meetings, um, I have redirected my crew to begin going out and patching some of those holes. Um, I don't know how long those patches will last. They will last one season, maybe two, um, but, you know, they're not pretty. Um, uh, but, you know, they, uh, they at least serve the purpose of um, filling uh, an ankle breaking hole in the ground for however long they last. And so uh, we have gone through and um, patched a significant number of the holes. There's still, there's still more work to do. Um, also, that work is very dependent on weather conditions. There's a really specific temperature window um, where the glue will set um, correctly. And so if it's too hot, it won't work. If it's too cold, it won't work. Um, do you have to section off parts when you do it? We do, and that is the other very, and then it takes 24 hours to dry. And every barricade or caution tape or everything that we put up, we come back and it's all ripped down and there's big old footprints in the, in the patches that we made. Um, so, you know, that, that is, that is a challenge, but still, if the, you know, if the, if the goal, uh, at, at this point is just to, you know, fill those, those voids, um, to the point where they're not so hazardous, um, that it doesn't really matter if they have a footprint in them, um, you know, or if they look very good. Um, so. Um, so if you go, Carol, if you, if you go back and, and visit the play structure again, you'll, you'll see that probably um, some, if not all, of the really bad holes out there are, now have, um, have been filled. Um, we still have more work to do, obviously, uh, but we're chipping away at it, um, and I've, I've, I've bumped that up on the priority list of our work this summer, because it worries me. Um, it's, this is, you know, there's many things. Uh, uh, that could go wrong in city parks, um, but that one um, is one that's kind of kept me up at night a few times. So, um, you know, um, 
So I, I, it's my hope that, um, uh, you know, the, the patchwork that we're doing, I personally, um, you know, I'm not about to run out and go try to spend this $50,000 this, you know, halfway through the summer right now. Um, I don't think that, I, I don't think that that's a good use of taxpayers' money. Um, I don't think that we're going to get an end product that is going to be worth that money. Um, and I, 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 I think that, um, you know, what's needed is a full measure out there, not a half measure. Um, so I hope that next year we can, we can, we can repair it and, um, you know, make that, that asset for the community and the city, um, uh, you know, something that, that is preserved is, is well cared for and, and lasts longer. Because the other thing that's happening out there is there, you know, with the water um, penetration that's happening through that broken surface, we will eventually see structural issues with the, with the play structure as well. Um, it's not just the surface. So um, it, it needs to get taken care of and it needs to get done right. Uh, so. Uh, this is Sherry. I just then thank you for getting your crew on doing something, whatever it might be. I, I did have somebody, it's probably two weeks ago. Um, said to me, wait, Sherry, aren't you on Parks mm -hmm. Committee? Um, I was just at Imagination Station with my grandkids, and it is scary. It's awful, yeah. So uh, I was going to share it, but if you've been working on it, great. Yeah, I, um, without putting too much of a, a damper on the conversation, I was trying to trying to get these photos. I can also just email all the photos to, to everybody if you want to see them, or feel free to drop by and check it out yourself if you're in the neighborhood. What are the photos of? Uh, they're of the patches that we put in and just kind of the process. You can there's some of them are kind of in process. You can see like you know where we've cut out the the rotten cracked sections. Um, and you know there is I'm giving my I'm giving my crew who's working on it some some creative license. Um, they you know it's kind of fun actually. They look at they look at the cracked section and they're like this one looks like a snake. This one looks like a bunny. And so they'll cut you know they'll cut like animal shapes out uh, and then and then fill them in a different color. So you know um, you know it's I mean all of this is gonna all of this is gonna get torn out when we replace it. But it's you know um, uh, it's 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 a temporary fix. So I remember 20 some odd years ago living not anywhere near Cowdale and taking my kids to Imagination Station. I know it's a city park, but is there any way to get help from the county or our neighbors perhaps? Our neighbors, yeah. perhaps? Mm -hmm. That's an excellent suggestion. I that's something that um, you know, uh, certainly I would um, I would um, want to discuss with Mr. Ray Young, and um, you know if uh, he he would have his finger on the pulse of you know um, you know of other funding sources uh, either from from the county or from you know yeah from Metro or from or from um, from City of Gresham or Wood, Wood Village. Yeah, any of them. Wood Village. Mm -hmm. So you know um, Wood Village probably would not have very much to contribute, but you know um, uh, I imagine that you know if, if it's something that they can do and if they see a value in, in it for, for their residents, then um, you know I don't see why they would have an issue with it. But again, that's you know um, that's that's a discussion that I I, I would want to have with Ray before I give anybody any specifics on on the possibility of that happening. So, no. Mr. Carroll, I'm wondering if there's any if you could reach out to um, like state. Or federal because it's ADA. Mm -hmm. Not all parks are ADA, mm -hmm. and ours. I mean, that building structure, especially, can be wheelchair. Right, right, and that is another consideration in the replacement. So you know, for uh, for after 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 the budget committee meetings, I you know I was discussing with with Travis Holton, the public works director, like what can we do with fifty thousand? Like we can rip it out and we can refill it with we can fill it up with five R as a placeholder. You know, like um, but. Travis felt very strongly that uh, while 5R is approved for ADA, it's not practical for a kid in a wheelchair. Um, and that with, and, and, and also because of just, because of the wind exposure of that site, um, you know, we could spend, we could spend $10,000 on 5R material to fill it. And then, you know, it'll all just blow away in the wind. So, um, uh, so I, you know, after that discussion, I agree with him that that's, that's, that's not the best option. But it seemed like a way at the time to kind of do it in phases, like do the demolition part and then have something in there um, to, you know, to, to hold the you know, place until we could do a complete resurfacing. So um, that idea was, was, was kiboshed and that's okay. I think that that's, you know, that's, we, we're throwing ideas around. 
Um, ultimately, at this point in the year, I think that if we just keep on patching it, that'll get us through this year. And then hopefully we're in a position to be able to do the work that's needed out there at this point next year. So this is Tiffany. So is your plan to just resubmit and ask for the same thing, like the same green? I will. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I, I'm going to look at other options. I'm going to look at other cheaper options just because this forever one product um, that, you know, is the, what I think is the best and most durable um, product. It's it is it's an expensive option. Um, and so I will solicit other bids um, and look at other materials that we could use um, in the meantime. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is a high enough priority for, for parks and I think for the city um, that, uh, that um, this, this is something that I will continue to propose. Um, is, is there any way for us to like encourage the citizens to speak on your like write letters or anything like that that they could do to tell the city this is really important to us our kids could get hurt yeah you know something like that absolutely letters communication with with um you know uh communication with city council i think is key on this issue um and you know and I, of course you know i'm not i'm not just saying like oh it has to be three hundred thousand dollars or nothing um i can you know if i can find a cheaper option that, that works um absolutely let's do that but I know it's not going to be fifty thousand um, dollars. So, um, and and so you know that's just that's just the reality. So um, you know I wish that I could, I wish that I could make it happen. Um, you know if I could if I could pull that off, um, you know I I would I would be doing you know a lot of stuff for a lot less money. <laughs> um, so uh, it's just not you know um, it's it's just not going to happen at that price tag. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but so I don't I don't understand how budgeting works. So if we don't spend the fifty thousand this year, can we attach that to the amount that we need next year, mm -hmm. or is it a whole new budget that we, we can? Thank you. You're right. Yes. Can, yeah, that we didn't spend it. Yeah, there was another forty thousand dollars, I believe, that was approved for that's the sun sails and imagination station. Yeah. I'm not doing that. There's no point in adding more infrastructure there before we fix the floor. Um, we're not doing that this year until, I mean, the floor is the number one priority. And so, um, um, and, you know, I just, um, we could add, you know, we could install those, those poles in the ground or something. And then, and then because of, you know, water penetration or whatever, then we're, you know, then we've got an issue there. So I think, you know, the floor is the foundation of the, of the thing. Um, and that's, I, I think, you know, um, what we should be focusing on there before we are spending money on anything else at Imagination Station. Um, in terms of you know future phases of things that are that, that we could do there, um, personally, I'm relieved that there's not a skate park going in at Columbia Park. Mm -hmm. I think that that would add to the management headaches um, in a way that it is you know um, uh, that I I I am happy uh, that I'm not I'm not having to deal with at this point. Um, I think that what would much better serve the community out there than a, a skate park. Uh, would be a splash pad. Mm, yes, um, agreed. And so, um, you know, perhaps uh, in you know in the future, that's that's something that I would uh, propose uh, for the parks budget. Um, however, first and foremost, we need to fix that floor. So, that, uh, you know, the idea of a splash pad is a few a few years down the road, if ever. I think so. Uh, this is Zach. I, I agree with uh, Shelley and Carol. I think. Corbett, um, or even across the river, but just the way that kind of the general traffic flows as far as it being kind of a destination location to bring kids that don't necessarily have anything other than some of the natural hiking areas and stuff like that on the gorge. Um, I mean, it's, yeah, it's definitely a big deal um, to citizens here as well as I think just tourism in general. So it's going to be good for us. Were there any funds wanted for the skate park? Sorry, what? Was there... Were there any funds? Mm -hmm. Budget slotted for the state? They were cut. Yeah, they were, they were cut. Yeah, that, that was that was cut. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It was close to a half a million dollars, but yeah, it was cut. Yeah, it just makes my stomach hurt how much we pay for consultants and mm -hmm. studies and mm -hmm. all of that for that very purpose and, and to have it fall under although honestly I'm not Sorry to see it fall under either. It, that is unfortunate, but you know that is that is that is how things go in government um, sometimes. Yeah. You know, and so I mean, it, it is a shame that money was you know was um, uh, used on uh, or you know was spent on on something that didn't ultimately yield um, a tangible product. But um, 
you know, that's, that's, that's how it goes sometimes. Um, and um, I think that, you know, while we did spend some money in the process, we, we did not spend a half a million dollars on it. So. Anybody have anything else on the topic? On anything? Uh, this specific topic. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, before we move on to committee concerns, initiatives, future agenda items, closing comments, uh, and closing down the meeting, is there anybody online that would like to say anything, Paul? Oh, no, thanks. All right. No, but thanks for doing all that you're doing, Jonah. And um, did you ever find the bench that we talked about? We never found the bench, no. Uh, what no. was it called? It, Sorry? We call it the sex um, No, I didn't find it. We went looking for it. Um, I mean, um, uh, yeah, I guess. Um, you know, I, 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 I has, I mean, stuff like that. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, uh, I'm uh, beyond being Reynolds, Reynolds High School's neighbor. Um, uh, I, I don't really have much to do with the school, and, and so really, uh, ultimately, I think this is more an issue for for the truancy officers and the parents and the school uh, staff. But um, uh, but if uh, you know, if we want to do a work trade thing, I'd be happy to call Reynolds up if I need help with like parks mowing. Also, they can come help me out. And, and so. um, no, welcome um, the new members of Park. Yeah. 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 So other than that, um, no, 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 no. Um, welcome, Woodrow. Good to see you again. Good to see you all. Tiffany, welcome. Um, as one of those people on Llewellyn Park who's had to deal with the trees, thank you very much, Jonah. I know you get a lot of crap for keeping down those trees. But those of us whose fences and houses and stuff are at risk certainly appreciate you. Thank you, Shelley. That's it for me. All right, Victoria. Uh, welcome, Andrew and Tiffany, and congratulations, Rob and Zach and Jim. Enthusiastic, Jim. Thank you, Jonah, for all you and your career. Thank you, Victoria. I'm just curious. You handed out the parks master plan. We're supposed to like what? What exactly like is in this, and what are we expected to do with it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's an excellent question. Um, so um, this document that you see before you um, is the the culmination of years of effort from many people in this room and from my predecessor Tim Siri. Um, I had very little to do with the creation of this document. I came in at the very end when it was all teed up for me and whacked the ball, but I did very little on this. Um, and so, uh, but what this document is, is it is, um, it was crafted with um, a, a lot of um, community involvement and survey responses um, uh, from a, a, a consulting firm that does this kind of work all across the country. And uh, this is essentially a, a 20 year master plan document that um, uh, is sort of like a guiding document that says what the community wants to see happen in their parks. Um, so there's a lot of survey responses uh, and you know, graphs and, and things, uh, you know, basically discussing um, improvements to the park system, um, rules and regulations, changes. Uh, the the need for a dog park and off leash access were both things that were that were uh, responses from the community in that 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 have now been enacted in Trout Hill Parks and there's more um, uh, so uh, this is essentially a reference document for this committee um, if we're you know if we're, we're uh, discussing the needs of parks and future planning um, and so it's, it's something we can reference for what what the community wants to see happen has already been done yeah. okay and then the other thing i want to say is i'm happy to like utilize email and get a hold of whoever i needs to be gotten a hold of to have a table down at first friday for the first um the august first friday Excellent. to represent the parks board i mean i can email everybody and make a schedule if we want to share it isn't it only what's the timeline for like four to eight 
Um, yeah, it's like it's like four to eight. I mean, it's it's, it's longer for us because we do tear down and everything. But yeah, I think it did. I think maybe nine. Um, I mean, would you know, by a show of hands, would who would be willing to like share an hour? That's my sure. That was like four. So I, I'm happy to send out, like, figure that out yeah. or move forward that, with that. So but I really Marley, Marley Boxler is the person that we want to talk to. And I'd be happy to send you an email. I already have it. And I emailed yeah. her and I have I don't know that she ever emailed me back, okay. but I did send her an email. Okay. I'll check in with Marley. I know that you, I know that you would be happy to have, uh, have the, the Parks Advisory Committee have a table at the event. So um, she's mentioned it to me in the past. So perhaps you said, I don't, I, I, I don't know why she hadn't got back to you, but I will mention it to her again. Okay. Um, and, and I'll, I'll you two in touch. So. I think in the past we've shared a table with um, like city, the city. Like community Tim development? Always, or, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tim always had a table up for us and we just hang out there. Cool, yeah. Um, yeah, well, we should we should uh, we should try to put that together for August 2nd. Um, so I will get in touch with Marley tomorrow and, and see if we can organize that. Okay. I love the goat idea. I'm definitely going to look into that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I think that's all I have. Awesome. I also love the good. <laughs> um, good to be here. And we'll see lots of my old friends from the other committees are floating around in this beautiful town. And um, I have a lot of questions. But I'm going to hold off so I can, you know, learn and listen a little bit more before I start. Feel free to email me also, Woodrow, if you if you well, want. Well, I got your phone number. Too. Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 call, I, I call a lot of department heads a lot and uh, and ask questions like, why do we do this? Yeah. That's good. So, That's good. Um, and then along the lines of the goats, um, we used to have a, a grocery market down where it came from, and uh, they had chickens. They did the same thing with chickens and and uh, for ants and. You know, other little insects. If the dog park is still open, though. I think that the goats will have a better chance than the chickens. But yes. maybe you close it when the goats. I don't know. Well, it depends. <laughs> I mean, if you have an insect problem, because it's a lot smaller pin, too. Oh. And you just move along. They had, a yeah. con they had a Conestoga wagon where the chickens would roost in. Oh, that's good. Moving along. So it keeps, them out, keeps all the bugs out of the orange groves. So. But no. I didn't, yeah, I'm sure there's too many. Orange groves. Are you from California, California or, or Oregon? Oregon? Or sorry, sorry California or Florida. Florida. Okay. 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 Gilbert, Gilbert, Arizona. Okay. Gilbert, Arizona. okay. okay. So. There's, there's oranges where I grew up too in, in Central California. All good. All good. Good to be here. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you. All right, Sherry. Um, welcome. Um, I just want to say, so many of you probably don't go down the east entry side into Viva Free Canyon, but Jonah sent his people down there to clear out so that I could make it down to the old bridge. <laughs> it was kind of really messy down there and he got it all cleaned up, so that was super great. Um, and then I just have, and I think I'll just save those questions till afterwards because it's just random, they don't really relate to us. So anyway. Thank you. Uh, no initiatives or anything. Um, great to see you all. We have this like month as an island meeting, I like to think of it. So uh, glad to see the new members and lots of good ideas. So thank you uh, very much and uh, many thanks for uh, making me the vice chair. So hopefully I never have to actually do anything because uh, Zach is always here. So fingers crossed, knock on wood, here we go. And uh, yeah, thank you all. And again, appreciation to Jonah. And congrats on, uh, I know it's a year and two months, but we'll round down a year. So. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Yeah, the two of you are never allowed to fly in the same plane together now. <laughs> yeah. Do we have a designated survivor? <laughs> Would that be Jim, I guess? Jim, we have a designated survivor? Do we need, like, if we're going to do a table and then in the past, we, like in the past, we've had um, well, different things that we're talking about during. But if we're going to, can we provide? Like a map of the dog parks and what and where you can like, enter I love it. Dogs yeah. And everything, but um, I want to go to a place where I don't have to deal with the dog yipping and yelling at my grandchildren. Don't take and them to so, the dog park. <laughs> we don't, but they're, they're, they are in Guadalajara and they are in Colombia, and I deal have to deal with dogs all the time, and I don't like to do that. So, but I do love dogs. So. Um, <laughs> Can we have like a map down there yep. of, you know, 
And then, like, what parks are around? Because not everybody knows where all the parks are. And it's such a great opportunity to say, hey, come visit our parks, and here's where they are. And this is the one you can bring your dogs to. And this is the one where there's lots of things to do there. So I think it's going to be great. Along those lines, uh, you had a really cool interactive map, right? To have, again, like, have like a little iPad, you can show them and let them navigate and. Yeah, you mean like the city GIS map on the city website? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that's a good idea. A lot of the pictures, um, I, I scoured the internet before the last couple of weeks, and a lot of the pictures are outdated. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, there's been one park that's completely CP Park. Mm -hmm. Very underrated. That's a beautiful little park. The equipment oh. is brand new. It's the other one that has them on Baby Swing. And the pictures online are of the old park. Yeah, and I that's think a brand that, new play structure. We need to have a picture of that. I think that it would be really good to update that that list that I was talking about, not only with um, information about like whether there's swings in the park, whether there's a little library in the park, because a lot of our parks have those little libraries that the community utilizes that nobody knows about because nobody yeah. goes to the little neighborhood well, parks. So we don't put those out. That's the community that posts posts those. Like, um, and but still, we could add those to the maps um, certainly. And whether the parks are like ADA compliant, because I don't think that's on there either. Or if there's a special type of swing there, that would be really cool to add to that list. I know it's kind of a big list on there of all the things, but it's just a list. Yeah, yeah. No, the, the, all good points. Yeah, we um, uh, actually, side note, dealt with a, a major irrigation fail at CP Park earlier this week. Um, there was uh, there was a section of sidewalk that was replaced earlier in the year, um, and and the contractor that did it um, uh, damaged the irrigation pipe under the sidewalk. So um, it's not going to be an easy repair to do. So we just we've shut the water off there at this point because I think it's right between. Um, the, the sidewalk and a cherry tree and there's just there's no digging happening there without demoing out the concrete so um, that'll be a fun one but hopefully they didn't go the way of the uh imagination station contractor uh yeah i i don't know i mean um so it's it wasn't the city that did that it would it would be somebody who I, um yeah i mean it was it was right away work so i you know um uh i think that um uh, we probably could find out who did it and follow up with them, but um, I don't know if it'll, I, I certainly, I don't think it's worth a lawsuit. It's a PVC pipe, you know, so it's, it's, um, it's a hassle for us, but not that big of a hassle. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Um, yeah, so we'll just add, I, uh, I do want to continue focusing on some of the uh, trail completions. Um, I think that was a big, Topic. I think that we got back from the community members and I've actively heard in our meetings from people who have visited. Um, looking at what we have available, uh, it might be ideal to, you know, we have some time over this next month or so to kind of look at it as we go along too, but maybe even do like a little work brainstorming session where we can pull up a map and just kind of talk about, you know, areas that might be good to kind of start thinking about looping things together or like what would be an ideal pathway. That way we can kind of also implement um, our existing park properties. Uh, river access is very important for that. So just kind of keeping these things in mind, that way we can kind of keep the conversation going on making a little bit more of an interconnected system within the city. Uh, that's, I think, top of mind for me. Um, and I also do want to echo what many have said here tonight and just uh, what a terrific job you guys have done this last year and appreciate your efforts especially. and. Uh, yeah, I think we were all kind of, we were all definitely bummed to see Tim go, but uh, you, you took the reins and you just moved hard and full speed ahead. So uh, I really appreciate your efficiency and your uh, your transparency when it comes to you know making calls and just kind of where your head's at and everything. It's really helpful for us just to have a straightforwardness on that. So I uh, appreciate you that. Awesome. Thanks, Zach. Thank you very much. And I appreciate all of you very much as well. Thank you. Um, this is, and you know, really, this is an excellent opportunity for me to bounce some of those processes and decision making, you know, um, uh, uh, processes um, off of off of people who obviously really care about Troutdale Parks. Um, so you know, I really uh, I really value the opportunity to get feedback on on that stuff in this room. So. Okay, and I appreciate the uh, nomination and votes for chair. Um, it's my first time being chair of the committee. But um, I will, you know, that's what you guys probably just uh, <laughs> help where I can. So appreciate you guys.
guys. And um, I think next month's meeting obviously has been canceled, like you mentioned. So the next one after that is going to be September 18th on the books, it looks like. <clears throat> 7 o'clock, same place. What, I'm sorry, what date did you say? That is September 18th, Wednesday, or we go September. And if there's nothing else, then we'll take a motion to adjourn. This is Robbie. I'll move to adjourn. I'll second it, Carol. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.